For this next example, we're going to kick it up a notch in terms of trickiness and difficulty because we're going to use L'Hopital's rule, but also the limit properties that we're supposed to know from Calculus 1. Mm. All right, so before we can use L'Hopital's rule, we need to check that this is going to work out the way we think it is. So if you take the natural log of 3 times infinity plus 5 e to the infinity, that's the natural log of infinity, which is infinity. So it's infinity over another natural log of infinity, right? So the natural log of infinity over the natural log of infinity is infinity over infinity, right? So there's your form. Always want to check that form. All right, so infinity over infinity, great. That means that I can directly use L'Hopital's rule. I didn't have to do any kind of tricky stuff. All right, now, the derivative of natural log of something is 1 over the something times the derivative of the something because of chain rule. So the derivative of 3x plus 5e to the x would be 3 plus 5e to the x divided by. And then down here, 1 over 7x plus, and then this one's going to be a little bit more tricky because of chain rule. So it's 3e to the 2x times 2. So that would be 6e to the 2x, right? Because 3 times 2 makes 6. I'm losing it. I don't do it there. I do it here. Hold on. I was doing my my derivative right away. Here, it's right here. This is 6 e to the 2x. Goodness gracious. Right. I was getting ahead of myself. Sorry about that. Okay. Now I'm going to rewrite that. Um, not with L'Hopital's rule. I'm just going to rewrite it because it's a little weird to look at. Oh, and I forgot my limit as x goes to infinity. Oh no, I would lose points. Terrible, terrible. Always have to have that limit until you actually do your substitution. Always. All right, so this is the limit as x goes to infinity of... All right, now the things that are in the denominators can swing around and be put up into the numerators. So I have a 3 plus 5x in the... or 5e to the x in the numerator. I have a 7 plus 6e to the 2x down here, right? So those two are kind of where they are. But this 3x plus 5e to the x can swing down and become here. And then this one, because it's division of a division, will swing up and become 7x plus 3e to the 2x. All right. If that throws you a little bit, just realize what you're doing real quick. So just pretend. If it was like 1 3rd divided by 1 7th, right? That would be one-third divided by one-seventh, which would be seven divided by three, right? That's the, the root of what I'm doing there, right? So the fractions divided by fractions means that they can reverse. All right. Now, I have no desire to have to do product rule because this is still infinity over infinity, right? So if I look at my form right here, that's infinity that's infinity, that's infinity, and that's infinity. So I still have infinity over infinity. Ah. But if I want to, to do L'Hopital's rule, I can. However, I'm going to do product rules all over the place. Yuck. Yuck, 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 yuck. So what we're going to do is instead use our limit properties. I should say product rule for derivatives. Derivatives. Use the product rule for limits. <laughs> and it was on, I was back at the beginning of this section. So it says that the limit as x goes to a of f of x times g of x is equal to the limit as x goes to a of f of x times the limit as x goes to a of g of x. That piece. It was number four, 
right? So to avoid the product rule for derivatives, we're going to use the product rule for limits. And we're going to split this bad boy up and we're going to kind of keep together ones that are similar to each other. So we're using rule number four, the product rule for derivatives, right? So it's number four back on this page at the start of this section, okay? All right, now which ones am I going to put together? Well, let's see here. I'm going to put the two that have sevens in them together because I think that'll kind of cancel out nicely. And similarly, I'm going to put the two with threes together because I think those will cancel out nicely. So according to my product rule of limits, I can say, all right, then this is equal to, let's put the two orange ones together, the limit as x goes to infinity of 7x plus 3e to the 2x over 7 plus 6e to the 2x. And then I can multiply that by the limit as x goes to infinity of 3 plus 5e to the x over 3x plus 5e to the x. All right, now these are all infinities over infinities, right? Because that's what they were up here, right? They were infinity over infinity. I just kind of broke them up into two pieces. So that means with L'Hopital's rule, your favorite and mine, since this is an infinity over infinity and so is this one, that I can change both of these into an equivalent expression. So it's the limit as x goes to infinity of seven plus six e to the two x, right? It's that chain rule again, over the derivative of seven is zero, so that's gone. And then six e to the two x times two, which would be 12 e to the two x. Again, we're using chain rule. Multiply that by the limit as x goes to infinity. The derivative of three is zero, so that's gone. So it's five e to the x over three plus five e to the x. All right, well, unfortunately, these are all still infinity over infinities, but they're getting close. We're getting, we're getting there. All right, so let's see here. One more L'Hopital's rule, I think. One more application. So if they're all infinity over infinity, so I can, I'm allowed to use L'Hopital's rule. So derivative of seven is zero. The derivative of six e to the two x would be 12 e to the two x because of chain rule. The derivative of 12e to the 2x would be 24e to the 2x because of chain rule. It's 12 times e to the 2x times 2. And then we multiply that by the limit as x goes to infinity of 5e to the x over 5e to the x. We finally got rid of that plus 3. And yay, that makes me very happy because... Now look here, I'm finally able to start canceling some stuff, right? Because at this step, there were still multiple um, terms in the numerator here and in the denominator here. But now those multiple terms are gone, right? E to the X over to the X, five over five, that whole thing makes one, right? So I'm taking the limit as X goes to infinity of one, which is one, right? So that's no problem. And then over here, Oops, and this is equal to, all right, so this is going to be the limit as x goes to infinity of, well, over here, the e to the x's will cancel, or I mean, the e to the two x's will cancel, and I'm left with 12 over 24. Well, since there's no more x's, and the limit of a constant is that value, right, we learn that in rule number one right here. So the limit of any constant is that constant. So that means that this is 12 over 24 times one. And 12 over 24 is a half. And that's the limit. And sure enough, it does verify graphically. Um, it's a little hard to see, but it's here. Remember that this, if this is two, then this is one. And then this right here is a half. Look at that value, right? See how it's approaching it? I can go look at the decimals graph also to verify it. And there it is, we can see it right here. There's that graph, and then you can see y is equal to a half is coming through right there. And that function 
is approaching a half as x gets larger and larger. And you can see that numerically, I mean, I didn't make a table, but you can see it when I drag my cursor over. That's equivalent to the numerical method anyway. So L'Hopital's rule did not lead us astray, but we did use those limit properties to kind of make L'Hopital's rule a little bit more sane for ourselves. Don't be afraid to use those properties if they're appropriate and will make your life a little bit easier.